All right, Mr. Lacasse, I want to take you back to July 13th, 2014. This is going to be the Sunday before the homicide that we're here about. Did you see Wendy Adelson that evening at her residence here in Tallahassee? Yes, after we returned for, from dinner and a movie, we went back to her residence. Yes, ma'am. All right. And at some point that evening, did the issue of the relocation battle that was going on back in the summer of 2013 come up? It did. And is that the issue we've already touched on, which has to do with her wanting to move to South Florida with the children and filing a petition to do so in the courts. That's right, and by extension, the issue of being stuck in Tallahassee. Okay, and while discussing that issue, did Ms. Adelson make some statements to you about her brother, Charlie? She did. And what were those statements? She asked to speak to me confidentially in a very serious tone of voice, told me that Charlie had investigated all possible options to take care of the problem of Danny Markell, including hiring a hitman, which would cost about $15,000. And I later revised that and thought maybe it was $50,000, but the dollar amount was the only thing in question. She definitely said that Charles Idelson had looked into hiring a hitman to kill Danny Markell. And when did she say Mr. Adelson had looked into hiring a hitman? When the relocation was denied the previous summer. Okay. All right. And the dollar amount, so she either said 15 or 50, you're not sure which? That's correct. Okay. And when she said this, what was her demeanor like? She's very serious. All right, so definitely not the to be confused with the TV joke? No, I'd heard that joke repeatedly. I knew that joke. This was something very different. This was chilling, a little scary, made my stomach flip. I found it disturbing. Um, the joke was said in a lighthearted manner, when, and this was not said in that way. This was serious and said confidentially. All right. Thank you. And I want to... Well. Okay. I think we should go from there to the next day, which is going to be July 14, 2014, the Monday before the murder. Yes, ma'am. Did you see Wendy Adelson on that day? Yes, yeah, she... I can't remember if I contacted her or if she contacted me, but she was excited to see me. And I wasn't so sure about that because the night before, we'd had an awkward conversation at the conclusion of that night. And I had told her that she didn't want to do this anymore, that she could just send me a text and I wouldn't you know, take any offense. We would just you know, break up. Um, so I, I didn't get that text. Instead, I talked to Wendy Adelson and she was excited to see me. All right, so what did you do? Um, well, then she needed to call me back and it went from enthusiastic uh, her enthusiasm about seeing me to let's just meet at yoga tonight uh, go in separate cars so there was a real shift in about 30 minutes did you go to yoga we did we went to yoga All right. and after yoga was there a discussion about your relationship and the status of your relationship yeah a, a very brief one I mean yoga is not a great place to talk obviously so while we were sitting there um, she seemed very cold and I kind of got the, the feeling that it was over, that, that this was it. Um, so as we walked to the car, I tried to talk to her about the relationship, and that didn't go well. And so I just kind of put up my hands and, and walked away, feeling sad that this was it. All right. And as you walked away, was that the end, or was there more conversation after you began to walk, walk no, away? No, she called out to me, and I uh, walked back towards her um, and she was deeply curious well during that let me back up slightly during that conversation she, she didn't have any interest in spending any time with me for the rest of the week so it kind of confirmed like you know this is over mm -hmm. um, but then when she called me back she had a series of detailed questions about what I would be doing on Friday and Friday is going to be July 18th, right? Yes. And that's the date of the homicide? That's exactly right. What were her, in her inquiries of you regarding that date? I had a trip planned to Tennessee. Uh, she was aware that I was planning to leave about 11 a.m. Uh, on Friday. I needed to get to Atlanta for an early dinner, so with traffic, uh, she knew I was departing at 11. Um, and at, at the yoga studio or in the parking lot, she had asked um, if I was still going, if I didn't go, why not? what route I would be taking, taking um, 
a lot, a lot of a bizarre amount of interest in that trip that didn't make sense to me at the time, given that she didn't want to spend time with me. And how does it make sense to you now? Well, if I had left on my trip at the scheduled time that she had known about for quite a while, um, I would have driven pretty close to Danny Markell's house about the same time as at the murder um, in a similar looking car to the suspect vehicle. What type of vehicle did you drive? I drove a 2004 Nissan Sentra that was silver metallic gray color. So if you had followed your original plans, you would have been passing by the Markell residence or nearby there around the same time as the killers were fleeing? Yeah, I would have been at Capitol Circle in Thomasville. Sure, I would have been on the same cell tower, for example. I think my life could have been pretty complicated had I taken my original plans. All right, so you didn't, I guess, take the original plans? No, I did not. I had made a last moment, uh, last minute decision the night before to leave Thursday night instead. I had not informed uh, Ms. Edelson about that because we weren't speaking. Actually, no, I don't, I don't know that anyone, for sure that anyone in Tallahassee knew I had changed my plans, just the people at the, the other end. All right, so you were actually in Tennessee at the time of the homicide? I was. And when you were, we've heard you were called in as a potential suspect um, and apparently named by a Jane McPherson. Do you know who that is? I do. Okay, who is that? That was a friend of Wendy Adelson's, and she was a doctoral student in our program. Um, I yes. had a, not much relationship with her, just a kind of a, a working relationship. We'd worked on a couple of projects together, but I didn't know her very well at all. But someone that knew that you were had been dating Wendy. Yeah, time. I think she was a confidant of, uh, of Wendy Adelson's, yes, for sure. Okay, so... You get called in, and were you able to provide documentation to show that you were in Tennessee and not in Tallahassee? Yeah, I was excluded uh, fairly quickly because uh, the investigators found uh, Kmart surveillance uh, footage of me at a Kmart in Tennessee using my credit card with my cell phone showing me there shortly after the murder, so it was impossible that I was the shooter. All right, and then was there also some similar type coincidences around the time of the trip that the killers made in June? Yes. Um, on June 6th, I had a business trip to Gainesville, and I departed at 11 a.m. on a Friday, June 6th, which Ms. Adelson would have known about by March. So really, I take two trips out of Tallahassee in my car the, the whole spring and summer semester, and both times hitman try to kill Danny Markell. Okay. Any further contact with Wendy after the yoga date? We, uh, about 10 days after the murder, she reached out through a mutual friend and we had a few phone calls. And during one of those phone calls, did you learn about a dinner where Wendy had become ill at the table? Yes, I did learn about that. And what did you learn about that dinner? Um, that she went out to dinner with Charlie for what he called a celebration dinner. He said something to her. She spontaneously vomited on the table. And this would have been within how much time after the homicide? Within a few weeks. Was it specified that the celebration was in reference to Dan Markell's death as opposed to anything else? Wasn't specified. Okay. But whatever it was, that's the dinner where she vomited. That's right. That's right. One moment, please. <laughs> no further questions. Cross examination. <laughs> Let's well, shift gears a, a teeny bit. Okay. When you and Miss Adelson were dating, there were occasions when she would drive, right? Yes. Did she have a good sense of direction? I don't know. You're aware that when she was married to 
she lived in uh, Professor Markell. She lived on the house on Trescott, right? Yes. And uh, when you were dating Wendy, would she often use Trescott as a shortcut to get from one place to another? She used it a few times when I was in the car, if that's what you're, you're asking. She I think did that on June 27th, the uh, day we departed to Gainesville at 11 a.m. on a Friday. I think you said in one of your interviews that she would do that at least 100 times, drive by the house? That was a figure of speech. Okay. Now, you mentioned, uh, we'll start with the joke, the yes. bad joke. Yes. You mentioned uh, this TV joke, how it was lighthearted, bad humor, certainly in the context of what happened, but it was a joke. Yeah, it was dark humor, I would say, but it was clearly a joke, yes. And do you recall that joke being given at that Yardbird dinner? I don't. Could it have been given at that Yardbird dinner? It could have, but I don't recall it, and I actually think I might remember that. I'm sure you do. Given what happened. I think one thing that has been established is you believe that Wendy Adelson tried to frame you for Professor Markell's murder, right? I'm suspicious that there was an effort made in that, that way, yes. And so that has affected your viewpoint, correct? Sure. Well, let's talk about your viewpoint. And we have to go a little bit back and repeat a couple things to put it in context. So you meet with Charlie Adelson. He tells you that he's in the uh, he's friends with people in the criminal element. You say thanks for a great meeting, correct? Send him a nice text. The next day, I sent him a text, yes. You don't go to the police? No, I don't go to the police. Okay. You then hear that Charlie's made a joke many times about this TV being cheaper than hiring a hitman. Heard the joke twice. Okay. You don't go to the police? No. Then in June... At a time when Wendy Adelson is breaking up with you. She sits you down and she says, I have to confide the biggest secret in my life. That a year ago, my brother actually looked into hiring a hitman. That's your testimony here today, right? You said in June, sir? In June? I'm sorry, in Ju yes, in, 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 I'm sorry, in July. In can July. You, can you restate that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll do it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll try to keep it lower this time. <laughs> In July of 2014, yes. about a week before the murder, when you're breaking up with Wendy Adelson, or things are seriously not good, she sits you down and she says, Jeffrey, I've got to confide in you. My brother actually looked into hiring a hitman. That's your testimony here today. No, she didn't sit me down. She said it in passing, and she had a habit of boarding out things that weren't in her own self-interest. Um, but she did do that. She did make that statement, yes, sir. And it was chilling to you. It was. Unlike the joke, you thought it was real. It was real, yes. Did you go to the police? I did not. And then you break up. Kind of. She strung me along for another week, as you know. Mostly, yeah, but kind of. Well, the murder happens, and you get called in as a suspect of the murder. Right. And you're upset at that point. Yes, I was upset. And you have a first interview with the police, and then you have a second interview with the police. Yes. And during the second interview with the police... You talked solely about Wendy Adelson. Yeah, I think that's right. I, I felt like I needed to 
said they need to look at Wendy Adelson as well. That was the point of that talk, yes, that, sir. That was the point of that talk. Yes. And you even you, you don't mention actually Charlie Adelson at all in that second interview. I already had done so, so yes, sir, correct. So that second interview, you talk just about Wendy Adelson. And in fact, you're so uncomfortable in the interview. You tell the police that. You say, I'm so uncomfortable, and, and Detective Isom asked you why. Do you recall that? It wasn't a Detective Isom. Okay, I'm sorry. The detective who was interviewing you asked you why. I, I don't... You have to remind me on that. Well, let me remind you what you yeah. said. You said, because it's hard for me, because if she would take me back right now, I would go back to her. Yeah, I was still under her spell to some degree. I was... I would say I was uh, fairly pathetic at that point. I would acknowledge that. Yeah. So... Let me understand this, because I, I want to make sure I've got it right. I don't want to put yeah. words in your mouth. Sure. Wendy Adelson has told you that her brother looked into hiring a hitman sometime in 2013. You, he gets murdered. He does. You go to an interview... And during that interview, you're still thinking about staying with Wendy Adelson. You don't want to talk badly about her because you still want to be with her. You're talking about the July 23rd interview specifically? Yes. Yeah, it only been a week. It was still pretty fresh. I was still pretty mixed up. That's right. Okay, well, let, let's see how mixed up you were in after that. So then you're clearly broken up at that point. We can agree. Right? Actually, uh, I, would, I would say yes, functionally. But I've testified before that Ms. Adelson and I had conversations in August where she behaved as if we were still together. And we had a conversation that finally ended it, initiated by me. Now, practically, we were broken up. You never dated, you never went on a date with her again, right? I never saw her again other than our okay. courtroom, right? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> then she tells you, according to you, that my client, Charlie Adelson, says that she had a celebration dinner with Charlie and that the celebration dinner was about the murder of Professor Markell. I don't recall saying that last part. But that's how you took it, right? I worried that was the case. I told the police, and my understanding is Wendy conceded she threw up on her dinner table. Do you know that the first time you told the police that was in March of 2015? I do know that. So what happened in September of 14? What happened in October of 14? What happened in November of 14? What happened in December of 14? January of 15? February of 15? You still didn't think that was important to tell the police? I'm happy to answer that. I think you deserve an explanation on that. Um, I, you may have noticed in my March 6, 2015 interview, I come in with notes, big pile of notes. Those notes are written in July of August. They're written pretty quick after the, the, the murder. I didn't come in right, in right away, partially, because I was scared of your client. I was scared of the repercussions if I went on the record further about my suspicion. So I was reluctant to come back in because I was frankly scared. Oh, I, I get it. You were, you, were, you were scared of him in August of 14, but you weren't scared of him in... In, in March of 2015. Now I decided to man up. I decided it was a homicide and needed to man up. That's the decision I came Right. To. You weren't scared to tell him that my client had actually looked into a hitman a year earlier. That didn't scare you. You could tell him that in July. No, I was. Of, I was hold on, sir. Let me ask the question. Fair enough. In July of 2014, you told police that Charlie Adelson, you heard, actually looked at hiring a hitman. You weren't scared to tell them that. I asked for police protection. I was scared. You told them that in July of 2014. I Isn't did. that correct? Yes, in the same conversation. I said, can I get some assurances? Can I get some protection? I have something I want to tell you. I'm scared to tell you. But you were too scared to tell them about a celebration dinner comment, and you waited almost half a year to tell them? Well, I... I I did wait half a year to tell them, but the uh, notes I brought in were written right after that interview. I also wanted to get my thoughts together because I thought this day might come. And I wanted, in those first two interviews, there was a lot going on. It was pretty traumatic, so I wanted to collect my thoughts. So that's what I was doing, in addition to being pretty frightened and having to get over that idea. Isn't it true that those comments never happened 
and you're upset because you believe that this family tried to frame you for murder. Everything I'm saying is true. I'm sure it is. May I have a moment, Your Honor? Move to strike the I'm sure it is comment. I'll withdraw it. It's withdrawn. Please disregard the of the jury. <coughs> I have no further comments for this. Questions? Yeah. Or questions. <laughs> This may seem like a fine point, but I want to make sure it's crystal clear. When Mr. Rashbaum was asking you about the hot tub conversation, Mr. Rashbaum said that his client said that he was friends with people in the criminal element. Is that exactly what was said? The word I recall is he had connections and friends on both sides of the tracks. Okay. Connections to criminal the criminal element. Element. In particular, there was the Cuban neighborhood uh, comment that I repeated to the TPD later. Gotcha. Actually, on July 21st, first interview, I mentioned that comment. <laughs> okay. How many pages of notes do you have in reference to this case? Like right now or over the last nine years? <laughs> I mean, kind of over the last nine years. Yeah. Uh, I'm a researcher by training. I'm an analytic person by nature. So those six months was pretty obsessive. I was reviewing every text message, every email, writing, writing, writing. I condensed it down. I think if you watch the videotape, you would see me bring in three, four, five pages. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would say I wrote probably a hundred pages uh, before I came in to see them the third time. Going through every receipt, yes. every detail, yes. partially out of what? What motivation? Well, pretty traumatic, so fear was part of it. Like, if they can catch the people that did this, I'll be safe. That was a, a big piece of it. Mm -hmm. Also, this was a brutal murder, and I wanted to see justice done, and I did not want to leave something sitting on the shelf. If I was in the possession of something that could help, I wanted to, to help. And you did, isn't it true that you didn't know what was going to end up being important out of all the nuggets you dug out of the phone and everywhere else? I had no idea. And I also told them repeatedly, I hope and pray this wasn't Wendy and Charlie Adelson. But just in case, here's the stuff I have. And Mr. Rashbaum asked you about why didn't you go to the police when you learned that Mr. Adelson had, in fact, looked into hiring a hitman. This was, this, just to reiterate, the statement was made the Monday before the murder, is that that's right? That's correct. Okay. And that's the statement that where Wendy's relating it to you. Yes. All right, so that's going to be in 2014. Yes. Okay, and she's making a statement about something that occurred in what year? 2013. All right, why didn't you go to the police with this information? Because it was a past tense thing she was reporting. I did not sense there was a present danger. I didn't know Hitman had already visited Tallahassee. I didn't realize there was an active murder plot. In hindsight, should you have gone to the police with this information? Yes. One moment, please. Nothing else, Your Honor. Maybe go sidebar briefly. Approach. <laughs> 